In hindsight, clearly I was overly optimistic. Back during the development of the King of Fighters 14, I speculated at what would need to happen in order for a Capcom vs. SNK 3 to happen, now that SNK was back open for business. The trajectory was incumbent on things that did not come to pass, most notably a renewed stewardship by Capcom of their fighting IPs not called Street Fighter. So many years removed from that video, it's mind-boggling to think that, at least for a few more months, Street Fighter V is still Capcom's flagship fighting game after only one attempt at deepening their lineup, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, fell victim to a parade of unforced errors, while SNK has already followed up with Samurai Showdown, SNK Heroines, and The King of Fighters XV, with Garo, Mark of the Wolves 2 waiting in the wings. There is clearly a distinct mismatch in their efforts at a full fighting genre brand restoration that would make it hard to market a proper Capcom vs. SNK 3 in the current landscape which makes it all the more peculiar that SNK's Yasuyuki Oda has recently stated that there is a strong and renewed spirit of collaboration between the teams at SNK and Capcom. Frankly, if any crossover game worth the name Capcom vs. SNK 3 was released today, half the Capcom roster would be met with confusion by a good chunk of the modern player base. Since my last video on the matter, Capcom has done the bare minimum of work to introduce new players to their classic fighting IPs, limited Darkstalkers presence in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Akira Kazama finding her way to Street Fighter V, and a collection of mostly non-Street Fighter branded fighting games from years gone by, unlikely to be adopted by anyone who wasn't there for them the first time around. There are a few possibilities here, and a cold turkey release of Capcom vs. SNK3 would be a terribly ill-advised one, since the stage has not been set for it. SNK could probably get away with it, since they seem to be better at adapting Capcom's characters from outside the fighting genre to a more traditional fighting game style than Capcom themselves, and the recent Switch release of Match of the Millennium serves as a fresh reminder of what a console-based sequel to that concept could actually be like, but a Capcom side collaboration could actually be more interesting if done differently. There is, after all, a noticeable generational gap in the fighting game community between players who started before and those who started after the release of Street Fighter IV, with the former being largely underserved in an official capacity from Capcom. This might be understandable to a degree, but Capcom's laser-like focus on the so-called new hotness is a disservice to their own legacy as a fighting game developer. What better way to correct things in a satisfactory way for everybody than with a new release that represents the old school? System creep has been a criticism on the fighting genre going all the way back to 1994's Super Street Fighter II Turbo, due to that game's chief critic, Jeff Schaefer, and his dislike of the introduction of super meters. Now, I'm not here to debate the validity of his point, but rather shine a spotlight on the huge gap in the current fighting game landscape, with ample room for a straightforward, no-frills 2D fighter that strips the genre back down to its core parts, screen control and Yomi. No super moves, only the most basic defensive mechanics, a stick and six buttons. How does Fatal Fury vs. Street Fighter Behold the Beginning sound for such a project? At the very least, this one game could represent the down and dirty 2D fighting that we got with such games as Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting and Fatal Fury Special. It would be a new release for the old school players to hang their hats on, as well as a snapshot of a golden age for newer players to appreciate. Even better, it could lift Capcom Cup out of its status as a one-game affair and begin building it into a broader celebration of Capcom fighting games, much like EVO itself was in its infancy. The development budget could be minimal, and it would be perfect for expanding Capcom's modern fighting game catalog. Moreover, you could have specific games on both sides that inspire both roster and system editions. The first sequel could involve Fatal Fury 3 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Another game could touch on Alpha 2 and Real Bout 2. You could even end with a game that introduces characters and elements from Mark of the Wolves and Third Strike. In the end, you've shown your oldest players a great respect and taken newer blood on a grand tour of the heyday, all while hopefully having other projects coming through the pipeline to renew other Capcom fighting IPs in the mainstream consciousness. That is when you move forward with Capcom vs. SNK3. Meanwhile, on the SNK side, all they have to do is be the best SNK they can be. They already have a blueprint for how to make SNK vs. Capcom 2, simply by building on the foundation of Match of the Millennium and involving newer characters from both sides, like 
Darley, Shune, Jamie, and Jury, who didn't get a chance to participate in the last round of crossovers. A console-made SNK vs. Capcom 2, built in the image of Match of the Millennium, would be absolutely glorious, and would honestly have the potential to be SNK's greatest game ever. There's potential for the current iterations of SNK and Capcom to do some amazing work together. Just the optimal way to go about it isn't necessarily the simple one this time around. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm Patrick Mifflin, sounding off.